So you can tell about the microcomputers. It's relatively low speed, but measured in gigahertz, right? Okay, then, uh, so you know the size, capacity, so this is the cost and so type of service for usage. Basically, these supercomputers are used as servers in large organizations. So working as servers in large organizations, supercomputers, and see, so do the uh, mainframes. Those are also uh, serving large organizations as servers. So these servers in the uh, medium scale organizations. So that is uh, in the mini computers. So these microcomputers are as client computers. So mostly for personal usage. Right, you can write down these points, right? You can write down these points quickly. So why, so what kind of, so how these properties are changing from computer to computer. So please write down this. and. So one more thing that I would like to add that is, uh, so the examples, other than the examples, you can add the, uh, yeah, functionality. So let's add the functionality. A several hundred thousand people can be served simultaneously. Ekavara simultaneously. Ekavara lakshagana kata seva wak Several hundred thousand of people can be served simultaneously. So, but here, sorry. This uh, one, the mainframe, again, several hundred thousands or several, maybe you can say several thousands of people can be. So here actually several hundreds of people of people can be served. So this is for personal or limited simultaneous use. Personal or limited simultaneous. Simultaneous kill again, ekavara. First, the microcomputers with ekavara pavi chikarana pulong. I have seen. So, even we have done. So, for an example, a car game like thing. So, multiplayer car game, two player, three player car game can be played using a single computer. But that is limited. Not several hundred thousands, not hundred thousands, not even tens. So, it's only for a limited. These are some examples. So please write down all and in addition to this everything is given in the book but these are some important points when you compare this according to size. I just search this in the internet and this is how the speeds change over the time. Supercomputer power, power change. This is made. Supercomputers are measured in flux basically but the other ones are not that much faster. So it's not measured in flops, therefore. So basically the microcomputers, it's not even like, so, but these can go for flops. Mainframes can go for uh, floating point operations per second, several, uh, but uh, basically mini computers and, uh, mini computers and micro, micro computers are much slower. Right, uh, just search this one, Japan's, uh, this is the machine, this is the supercomputer. So it says it is the fastest supercomputer in the world. So, you know, you want to know how fast this is. So you just go and see in the Wikipedia. Uh, maybe it's the details are there. The floating point instruction per second is uh, here. You can see it's closer to 442 petaflops, petaflops, even uh, yes, 1000 uh, teraflops is equal to 
one petaflops. So this is 442 petaflops means uh, like 442,000. Yeah, 442,000 uh, teraflops. 442,000 teraflops. So this is the one uh, which is fastest in the world. Right? And uh, so this, this is how it looks like. It looks like a refrigerator, something like this. Right, okay. So now you know how this categorize according to the size and the functional its speed. And uh, so we, in the future, so in the future lesson, we will learn, in the future lesson, we will learn how to actually convert your computer, microcomputer to a server computer. We will learn how to convert your computer to a server computer. So server computer means a special computer. It can serve other computers. So such as Google. So of course, I don't know. So you just search. It's several billions, right? Several billions of dollars. It's really, really costly. Because uh, these are used in few companies. Only handful of companies are using these, com these kind of computers. So not commonly selling over the world. Because these computers cannot be Actually, so this cost of these computers cannot be bared by small or medium scale companies. Only very large scale companies are using these computers. Just Google it. Right. Okay. So then the next second categorization is based on technology. Right. The second one based on technology. Actually, there are two kinds of technologies used in the uh, computing world. So one is analog technology. The second one is called digital technology. Analog is basically focusing, giving, so this is, I'm using this image to explain this. Basically, analog is focusing, giving any value between a given range. But digital is basically, it's having specific values, only the given values between a given range. So that is the specialty of analog and digital. You just write down. Analog. Signals are using any value between a given range. Example sounds. Sounds that human beings can hear. So that is between 20 to 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It can take any value between that. So no specific values, it can take any values. Digital signals, in the other hand, digital signals, are or may digital signals may have only given values, specific values, or discrete values between a given range. So that is the speciality of digital signals, having discrete value between a given range. I mean discrete value or specific value or separate distinct value within a given range. Then this that is called digital. So in this diagram, you can see analog can take any value. So this is the minimum and this is the maximum. Between the minimum and maximum, it can be ranged. But digital, you can see only this value or this value, this value, this value, like some levels, only the levels that is called digital. You can draw this and write this. Based on that, we have different computers. First finish this. Uh, so other than the analog and digital, we have mixed of that, that is hybrid version. So basically, what type of computers that we are using? 
right? Most of the computers that we are using are in, is it analog or digital? What do you think? Analog. Computers that we are using. Yes. Are they digital or analog? So most of the computers that we are using are digital, right? Most digital. Of, yes. Most of the computers that we are using in our day-to-day -day life are digital. But there were some analog computers in industry in uh, in uh, so there were some analog computers used in industrial applications researchers weather reporting etc but most of the computers in industries engineering medical science and researchers are now hybrid those are now hybrid having analog and digital both features right so that is very important to know because uh, earlier days like in your book also there were some examples there are some examples so here when it comes to uh, so yes we draw this diagram right last day we draw this diagram here uh, these are some common usages of analog so road lamps speedometers meteorological mechanisms so earlier days these this were used oscilloscope like all these things were using this kind of things but now so it's mixture of analog and digital ecg machines mri machines modern uh, meteorological devices machines and uh, modern electromechanical devices robots now those are analog and hybrid both so it can work with the analog signals and work with the digital signal both okay so then it is about the function of uh, the computer so this part actually we draw this diagram lastly this is called logical diagram of the computer or the block diagram so check whether we have draw we have actually sketch all the arrows right so i have given this check whether we have sketched all the arrows you can see input devices main memory output devices then storage and cpu same component input cpu main memory output secondary or the storage and then uh, you can see the red color arrows actually we have represented that using blue color arrows that is the data flow and in addition to that there's another big arrow this is instruction flow instructions are going from main memory to the computer that is instruction flow and control unit is sending signals to each and every component that is for those are called control signals here dash arrow represent control signals so this diagram we actually have sketched last week as i remember if not please correct that okay so then actually you have to we have to discuss about each and every component separate way so that is basically uh, input devices output devices communication devices so likewise we have like up to networking we have to discuss there were one question asked from one of you guys in the beginning i couldn't answer that time so i as i can remember timasha you are asking what is bandwidth right so let me reply that also if you have not written the note please write down it now missing part Meanwhile, I'll give the answer for the bandwidth. Bandwidth means uh, the so it's similar. Let's say you have a water line. Water, but actually, you know, can you tapare ka di gala na jale parima. Apni kena ye water, but bandwidth ka kya? Okay, the water. 
number of liters that you get per second for per given time is called bandwidth. Similar to that, data bandwidth means amount of data that you receive within a given period. It's called bandwidth. So maximum bandwidth is, so basically, so if you have a tap line, so it's something like this. Uh, let's say water pump or tap, whatever. But if you have like water line. Okay, let's take this one as the example. So sometimes in this water line or water supply pipe, so let's say water pipe transparent. If you get a water pipe, a transparent one like this. So unfortunately, not with water, no? So I have to show this, you know, this. With water? Nope. Okay, let's take, let's take this image. Okay, let's say you have a pipe and amount of water, the number of liters you get from this pipe per second is five liters. So that is, let's say that is when this tap is open in its maximum uh, capacity. So that is called the maximum bandwidth. And, but always you will not perceive the maximum bandwidth. For an example, if you go to a internet, maybe you have one Mbps connection. As we saw in the previous one, in the one gigahertz computer, you have one Mbps connection, but what actually comes is uh, maybe 500 Kbps, 500 Kbps. So that is called throughput. Bandwidth is the maximum amount of data that you can receive within a given time. And throughput means the actual amount of data that you get in a given time. Hopefully that explanation is in. Did you understand that? Oh, all right. So maybe you are having a, when you're having a bandwidth issue, basically your internet connection is very slow. When you're having a bandwidth, low bandwidth or narrow bandwidth, your internet connection will be slow. You can check your speed of the internet connection. How? You can go to this site, speedtest.net. Go to speedtest.net and click this go button and you can check the speed of your internet connection. But right here I'm sending this to you. If anyone want, you can check it by going to this side. Right for the moment, my actually my bandwidth is somewhere around 50, 50, M, 50 Mbps. But you can see my throughput is not actually the 50. I'm not getting the entire 50. I'll get around 38. Even my bandwidth is 50. I'm getting around 38. And upload is better than the download now for the moment. Upload is little higher than the download. Okay, finish right in this part. And with that, we are going to finish for today. Uh, next day, actually, uh, you have your examination just after the new year. And I would like to wish Happy New Year for those who are celebrating this year. Uh, happy, wealthy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. Right? And uh, let's see after the New Year. So the immediate week, it's, uh, you can either take that as a holiday, but in my word, it's not holiday. It's a different day. It's exam day, right? So... I wanted to give you a small leave, but uh, since uh, we are having some other additional leaves in coming in the Vesak and Poson, I'm thinking of doing the exam and finish it in that day. Okay, then see you all in the week after next week. Bye. Right. Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year.